Hello, my name is Nigel Peregrine, Maverick, Loss Adjuster, Indemnity Juggernaut, Insurance Bastard. Um, yeah, so this is the second podcast. Um, first one went quite well, uh, which I'm, uh, you know, I'm not really bothered, really don't care what people think, but, you know, people seem to like the insight into the true nature of life as a loss adjuster. Fighting on the front line of uh, the insurance world. It's been a good couple of weeks. Um, I'm I'm slowly working my way through my homebrew, uh, my latest batch, uh, which I call a prostate examination. And uh, as for work, you know, a bit of of commercial, a bit of domestic stuff. And uh, I've only had to call my union rep five times. So, yep, that's, that's all gone quite well. Speak. Today I'm going to share with you uh, another insight. I think we're working as a loss of justice. You, get, you see a wide variety of stuff. and you, Sometimes you get to rub shoulders with the stars. Uh, today's episode is going to be no exception to that because I'm going to share with you um, an audio recording of when I actually went round a Top Gear track. Um, yeah, because I, I had to um, I had to adjust a claim for the BBC. Something happened there. You'll find out about it. Um, and uh, yeah, well, well, one thing led to another. The producer saw me pull away in the beast, he got in touch, and said, you ever go around our lap, or you? Or in... I did it, I did it last time, didn't I? And today's episode is brought to you in association with Dead Clean Eat Blunders, where professionalism is at the heart of everything we do. All right, it's done. Now the bollocks out, Now, my guest tonight is a very busy man. Gave us a call, said he'd pay us a flying visit to see if he could beat it, and he probably can. You might have seen him traipsing through Not Handsome, an it girl. Patronising, self-important, snide, two-faced, self-hating, arrogant, lazy... Bastard. <laughs> he recently submitted a £20,000 claim for some gravel. <laughs> He's still at it! <laughs> and I don't care. He achieved all this despite being born with a moustache. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nigel! <laughs> now, hey. Nigel, Nigel, it's not your first visit, of course, is it, this? No, no, I was here on business uh, about 12 months ago. Uh, I was here to deal with an insurance claim to the staff room. Yeah? I didn't cover it, though. But why didn't you? Well, you, you've been pissing about with the kitchen equipment ever since watching Steven Seagal use a microwave as an explosive <laughs> device in that Under Siege film. Have you ever wondered if your bin could somehow be converted into a mortar? <laughs> All loss adjusters have to be highly skilled to be able to turn a wide range of domestic everyday items into effective weaponry. A trouser press in the right hand is a formidable weapon because when we step beyond that threshold of any home or business we could be crossing the threshold into the very bowels of hell it's dangerous yeah it is yeah um, the people haven't got a shitting clue yes to be honest but yeah the, the claim wasn't covered why <laughs> well, it wasn't an unforeseeable event was it should i care should i care about it you had to pay for it yourself. £10,000 of our money. £10,000. Serves you right. You've had it all sorted now, don't you? There's usually tea and coffee making facilities, uh, water in the kettle. Yeah, I know, yeah, big TV and all. There's BBC One, BBC Two, 
ITV, Channel 4 and you get a porn channel. That, that did catch me by surprise. Uh, I could only watch about seven minutes and I turned it over. Yeah. Then I saw Ainsley Harriet and thought oh, bollocks of this and I turned it back. <laughs> Let's be honest, shall we, OK? You're a man, you're alone, you're in a room. <laughs> Staff room, for shit's sake. How long's it going to take? <laughs> well, hold on, hold on a minute. If you think that I'm that loss adjuster who made the papers for engaging in, you know, wrong bloke, mate, wrong firm. Well, obviously, you've had an immense career, but tonight is the big one, isn't it, frankly? Yes, Gerald, uh, 35 years in the game. Adjusting the shit out of claims. And you've got to be how old to do it? Well, it helps if you've got some experience. We've got one baby in our team at the moment. Tim, his name is. He's only just gone through puberty, bless him. Uh, still a bit wet behind the ears. Only on his second marriage, but what do you expect of 38? Well, that sounds like the perfect job for a young offender. Not necessarily. Uh, don't get me wrong, some of us may or may not have had a past of some sort. It helps to be a bit rough around the edges, like a pork scratching. The older guys, does the smell of Raljex hang in the air? <laughs> actually, you'd be surprised at how dexterous and flexible we actually are. We, we do tend to stretch before we enter a property, uh, but we have been known to snort a few lines of Raljex and our crazy nights out. That Chartered Institute of Insurance dinner was absolutely shitting carnage. The less said about that, the better. I'm surprised you're not sponsored by Viagra. <laughs> Don't need it, mate. All adjusters, even the lady ones, are alpha males. We're extremely virile creatures. I know one adjuster that said, they said one of those internet relationships, you know, she lived in Bulgaria. They hadn't even met her yet, she still managed to get up the duff. I mean, that just says it all, don't it? How many women have you slept with? Wasn't, wasn't really expecting the conversation to go like this. Uh, but OK, well, I mean, that just depends on what the definition of slept is. Yeah? But I can calculate this. Um, hold on. Um, so if I take that, um, it's those that told me to piss off. Those that put in a grievance. Both of those that let me just kiss them. Deductible. Excess um, uh, salvage. I would say about four. You can believe that as well, that figure, because uh, I mean, I don't want to brag. All loss adjusters uh, don't exaggerate. It's against the code of ethics. Breasts for you later, I. I tell you what, Gerald, you, you, you'd like our two meetings. Welcome to the Financial Ombudsman Service. Piss off! I've got to say, uh, it hasn't exactly been like sitting talking to a rugby player. Well, that's because I'm a loss adjuster, mate. You do know who I am. You really do have a knack for it. What? Insurance. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, that's my job, isn't it? You, you know it is. It's my shitting job. Are you all right? Are you on drugs? Everyone's on drugs. Well, that explains it, then. Not me, uh, unless you count the finest alcoholic beverages as a drug. And, of course... <laughs> insurance. Anyway, look, we've established only 4% of accidents are caused by... Normal people of a sound mind. <laughs> Squirrels with antlers. Vermin is generally excluded anyway. It would be better if you could get rid of all the animals. You've got to kill your children's pets and eat them. <laughs> Don't have any children. I'm allergic. <laughs> Illegal immigrants. Maybe the Irish. Uh... The Queen is German. Well, I, I, I think maybe... Um... A woman! A woman! 
<laughs> Don't get rid of the queen. Actually, an old girlfriend of mine, which I knew to be rubbish. Um... Women actually do have... I can't believe I'm arguing the case for women. <laughs> Here goes. Fewer accidents than men. I'm not sexist, but that's bullshit. I'll piss off. I'll tell you who we could get rid of, though. Hugh Grant. Well, I, I, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, but I was thinking about um, a, a shit snivelling parasitic gammon larger called Oliver Beardlove. Hmm. Why? Well, firstly, he's a loss assessor, meaning he convinces policy holders that he can help them by trying to get a claim as shit inexpensive as possible. It's quite annoying. How can this be legal? Oh, no. And then these assessors, they get commission. But the bigger the claims costs, the bigger the effect on the renewal premium for the policy holder. They haven't got a shitting clue, mate. Snide. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention it. And my ex-wife ran off with him. Being eaten by a cow. Shit every. <laughs> Still a bit raw, you know? So you don't think he's a wanker? <laughs> what do you bloody think? Slight wanker. <laughs> If we could at least get rid of all assessors, that would make adjusters' lives easier. The adjuster and assessor have been engaged in mortal combat, shedding blood on the front line of insurance for shitting years. And it's not going to stop any time soon, I can tell you. A simple straight punch-up. Well, adjusters are all trained in the ways of hand-to-hand -hand combat. You might look at one middle-aged Debenham suit, Consistent look of regret on his face and think, what could he do? He doesn't like anything. Listen. <clears throat> Big shitting mistake. Kick him in the face. <laughs> you, you could try. Every adjuster is told up and all. I've got a knuckle duster, I call him my brass companion, but yeah, telescopic buttons, nunchucks, whatever. How many fights have you actually had in your whole life? Couldn't tell you, mate. Probably a couple of scuffles a week at least. Uh, standard adjusting, mate. I can't say too much. HR might be watching, and I am on my final warning. You have said um, that all the incidents that you were involved in were either accidents or blown up out of all proportion. You, st you stand by that? My union rep told me not to discuss it. I may have already said a bit too much. Have you had a bomb threat? Not yet. Um, I have had a bum threat, though. Uh, many of the policy holders threatened to shove some policy word at my arse in my time. Only actually succeeded once. She was surprisingly strong for a pensioner. <laughs>
but Shit. as is so often the way with Top Gear, I'm afraid it hasn't quite worked. No, no. I had to call the RAC. I used to be with the AA, but it was very confusing. Every time I broke down, I'd end up calling my sponsor. Standing on the R's shoulder trying to convince Kevin that it's not a cry for help was a right pain in the arse. Especially when I'm trying to get to a visit where a pet hamster on LSD has destroyed a ground floor flat. You've got to kill your children's pets. And eat them, yes. You said that earlier. So I didn't get to do it. Things I'd rather do than drive one of those. Is, is, is this going to be on the telly, though? No. Bollocks. That's why we're not going to get any complaints about this. That's, that's fair enough. I, I do sometimes have a mouth like a backed up shit pipe. What's happened to your face? I'm going to make a move then, yeah? If I need a jump start, though, any, any chance of. Uh... No. <laughs> Nigel, it's been great fun having you here. It's been a complete waste of my shitting time, Jiz. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nigel! Yeah! So now it's a part of the podcast uh, where um, I'm down the pub again and um, I'm going to answer your, uh, your your questions that you've sent me on, on the Facebook. I did, a, I did a competition recently where you could win a mug, uh, a Peregrine podcast mug. And uh, part, part, part of the entry was you had to answer a question and then you had to send me a question to read on the podcast. Now I'll go through all these questions eventually. Um, over the next couple of podcasts, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll shortly I will read the winner, uh, the, the, the winner's uh, question. But the first one I'm going to read is from uh, Adam Cresswell, um, and he says, uh, Hi Nigel, loving your podcast. Then he answers the question that I asked, and then he says, uh, uh, I write this um, from the room of yet another premiere inn I'm staying in, while fine on the front line, uh, working away in yet another shithole uh, of, of a city doing loss adjusting. And in bracket he's got Newcastle. If you're in a Premier Inn, just a little tip there, Creswell. You need to remove that purple thing over the bottom of the bed. You need to kick it off. You get that off How many bad arseholes have sat on there? You know they don't wash that every time. You need to kick it across the room. Get rid of it. It's disgusting. Um... Right, then, now, the question is, how, in your many years of doing the job, did you deal with the excessive driving and often loneliness of working away and many hours of staying in various hotels up and down the country? Looking forward to your next podcast. All the best. Bloody good question, Cresswell. Um, yeah, so, um, first of all, with all the driving, it helps, it, it helps you if you're in a car that you like. Um, I'm all right, I've got my Capri, love my Capri, uh, just had the radio upgraded, I've now got FM, and um, I've got um, a selection of cassettes in the, uh, in the glove box, usually um, 80s rock, um, you know, I have got a couple of uh, Simply Red uh, albums for when I'm feeling quite emotional, um, I did have a low point uh, at one point where I was listening to um, a bit of the Lighthouse family, but uh, yeah, and then um, when I got the car washed, someone nicked it. Um, <clears throat> do me a favour, really. Um, as for staying away, um, uh, well, someone recommended an app on your phone. They said there's an app, and you uh, you can find other people uh, who are in the local area working away from home who just want a beer, uh, just want a bit of beer and a bit of banter. Um, it was called Grinder, and um, I, um, I I went on there, and you could see photos of the of the, of the blokes in the area. Um, some of them, I, I, I can only assume that they must have been uh, already rated by other people because some of them were. Just, it was just a picture of an arsehole or um, or, or, or a cock, and um, so 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't really uh, come across uh, the best in their previous meetings. Anyway, I, I arranged to meet um, a, a bloke. Um, he, he wanted to meet in the local park for some reason. Um, yeah, very, very uncomfortable. Um, he started to get a bit touchy straight away. I don't know what that was all about. I had to choke him out. Um, the similar sort of thing happened in, in the second one. He wanted to meet in the public toilets or something. I don't know what, what it is with these blokes, but you know, six times this happened. Six shitting times. Um, every time I had to just knock them out. So I don't bother with Grinder. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. You just meet, you just meet weirdos. Um, other than that, if you're in the Premier Inn, you haven't got a mini bar. Um, so you, you can't use that. Uh, what else do I do? Uh, basically, I just wait. Like that, that's what lots of justices do. We just wait. We like cold springs. Good question, Chris. Well, uh, the next question we've got is from uh, Richard Punter. And he says, um, if you had to choose between seeing your folks live to 100 or spend the inheritance on a sports car, what colour would your Porsche be? Um, uh, I would get a Porsche. Um, I've got a Capri, mate. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, although I would get the red door changed. I want a black one again, so it's all matching. Um, yeah, good question. Good question, Panta. Next question is from uh, Shanara Begum. And uh, uh, she writes to me... Um, she got the question wrong. She know you got the question wrong. Uh, the answer to the own brew question. Uh, that, that was, uh, unfortunately, uh, you were way off. Way off there. Um, but but you, you, your question, as an adjuster, do I appoint an assessor to deal with my claim? No time at the moment myself. And then in brackets, I know it goes against all principles. We have hit, we've hit a low point here, haven't we? Um, let me tell you something, right? There was once uh, an adjuster. And he actually appointed an assessor to help with his claim. All the other adjusters, yeah, they all turned against him. From all the different firms, all of his colleagues, everyone turned against him. Have you seen the film John Wick? Basically, John Wick was based on this situation. Um, yeah, John Wick was actually a loss adjuster. And he was, uh, all the other adjusters turned on him um, because of, uh, he appointed an assessor for his own claim. So yeah, what I would say, Shinara, is um, you want to keep that quiet. You will be turning to the dark side. I would like to say good question, but you know. <sighs> Moving on, um, we've got uh, Ian James Raxton. Ruxow. Uh, Ruxow asks me um, uh, about Friday afternoon. What happens on a Friday afternoon down the pub um, and stuff? Any policy holder or insurer uh, called during that time. There's an incredible invention. It's called voicemail. Do not fear it, for it is your friend. Uh, mine, mine is a, you know, a, an incredibly professional greeting. Um, it says, uh, thank you for calling. But right now, I'm probably either drinking, dealing with some bloody Armageddon-like insurance carnage, or maybe both. And... Uh, when I've got it all sorted out, I will get back to you quicker than you can say. Preliminary reports. Yeah. 
Stick your voicemail on, mate. That's what it's there for, eh? Good question, Ruxo. Good question. And now the winner of, uh, of the mug uh, was uh, uh, Charlie Urell. Chuck. I called him Chuck Urell. And um, he, he says, Afternoon, Mr. Peregrine. I like that, Chuck. Um, you're not crossing boundaries. You know, you know where you stand. I like that. Um, I have seen the mug you have produced and I am duly impressed with such a high quality product. Thank you. Um, the kind of product that would indeed foster the envy of my peers. I'm still getting hassled now. Um, someone in Australia is, uh, keeps badgering me about the... Uh, Can you send me a mug? No. Um, uh, I now have a fantasy to produce such a mug during my next meeting as a statement of intent. The mere association with your person would cause any assessor in the room to evacuate a brown coloured substance, which they normally call professional advice, from the only orifice they don't normally flap in my face. This does bring me nicely to the answer to your first question. He then answers the question, the question correctly. And then um, the question I would like answering is your professional opinion on my next course of action. I recently spent hours of my life explaining to an assessor how a day one uplift, I'll explain what it is in a minute, does not negate the fact that their client is rather underinsured. In fact, with the application of average, we can actually meet his seven figure claim with the change left from the fiver I paid for a conjugal visit with his wife. I am due to meet remnant of assaulted slug shortly. As such, should I? A. Shove a rolled up copy of a policy wording down his throat while screaming read into his soulless eyes. B. Sacrifice a chicken to the dark gods, praying he is involved in a car accident on the way in. C. Throw a mug of hot coffee into his face as he walks through the door. And in brackets, if only I had a suitable mug. Well, you got one now, mate. Um, D. Break into his house and switch the labels on all his canned food, making him doubt the content of his own pantry and his sanity. E. Carefully explain the provisions of the policy and try to be civil. Well, we can rule that one out, can't we? Um, yeah. um, now, let me just explain to those of you, because I don't know if you're all insurance juggernauts or, or not, but um, anyone's welcome to listen to the podcast. Uh, but day one is basically when you insure a building for it. I'm going to use an example. So you, you, you insure a building, you say the value of that building, 100 grand. The insurers might put a little uplift on it, and say, so, well, to allow for inflation over the next 12 months, we'll call it 150. But the fact is, right, that you're still going to make sure that at the day one of that policy, that 100 grand has to be right. I had to explain this to, uh, to an assessor, because they'll try it on, won't they? They'll try it on, even if they know they're in the wrong. Sometimes they'll still try it on. Try and be a little bit cheeky, a little bit pally, a little bit wee. You know, like that dumb little wood bloke, try and get things for free. No, it's not happening. Get back in your box. Piss off. I had to explain it to uh, an, an assessor. Uh, Sydney Peppercorn Hound. He, he started off as an adjuster, but he failed. He was crap at it, he couldn't do it. That's why he ended up as an assessor. Like most loss assessors, they, they can't cut it as an adjuster, which is why many losses, loss adjusters uh, refer to them as lessers for short. Um, but yeah, uh, I had to explain. I said, I said listen here, Sidney, let me explain to you in ways that you'll understand, yeah? As a lesser, probably stands to reason that you struggle to please your wife in the bedroom. Maybe you need a, a little blue pill or a pump to get you up to scratch. Yeah, but you can't go around acting like you're some kind of Lothario, yeah? You're not Mick Upnall, yeah? You're bloody a bloke that needs a pump. You're no sexual Olympian, yeah? 
you're still inadequate. Same thing here. And that's how I explained it. If you want to use that whenever you come across an assessor trying to give you a lift, they'll probably understand it then, you know. Um, <clears throat> let's, now let's go through the options, yeah? Um, a, you roll it up, shove it down his throat, screaming read. It's tempting, isn't it? It's it really tempting. But you don't want to ruin a good policy wording. Policy wording is king. Um, what I have done in the past is I've, I've, I've uh, turned to the correct page, shown it to him, and shoved it in their face. Um, yeah, you've got to be careful, though. If you do it too hard, you will get nosebleed. You don't want to get blood on the, on the, on the wording. Uh, the second one, uh, sacrifice a chicken to the dark gods. Uh, praying for the car crash. A couple of things I want to point out here. Now, those kind of rituals that adjusters do have gone back as far as the basement of the Lloyd's Coffee Houses in the 1700s. And as you know, we have to use a virgin. Um, <clears throat> trouble is with that is you don't know if the chicken is a virgin. Um, uh, secondly, if you were going to pray for them to have a car crash, you don't want anybody innocent to be, you know, to be hurt or involved. So I don't really like doing that kind of thing. Um, C, throw a mug of hot coffee into his face. We're all tempting, but you've got to make sure you've got a really hot coffee. I know uh, one adjuster, a colleague of mine, who, um, who had a coffee, but to make sure it was hot enough, they used the policy holder's microwave. The thing was that the coffee was in one of those metallic thermos mug things. Uh, Long story short, caused a fire, second claim, very awkward. Um, next thing, um, you know, breaking his house and swap all his labels and all that. Yeah, not a bad idea if he lives on his own. But if he's married, you're then, you know, you're then messing with the minds of his family. And they've got enough to deal with living with a, a parasitic turd pocket. You know, imagine living with someone with such a low moral fibre. Yeah, horrific, horrific. I feel for them. We should set up a charity for them. Um, as for um, E, uh, explaining, be civil, we can write that off. We're not, we're not considering that one. Uh, and then they chuck you, do what you like, mate. You know, you're a grown man. Uh, would I do those things? Not really. Um, but, um, you know, the main thing is you are treating lessers with the correct amount of disdain. Uh, they deserve it. Uh, good question, Chuck. Enjoy the mug. And if you want to uh, upload a picture of you using the mug um, or the mug pride a place in your office, obviously without any data protection breaches, then, then, then you know, feel free. Uh, stick it on the Facebook. And that concludes uh, the, the podcast uh, this time. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, if you uh, if you listen on iTunes, give it a rating. Uh, that always helps. Uh, share it with your friends. Uh, share it with your family. Share it with whoever. I can, you know, I can give a shit. But, you know, uh, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, uh, any questions? Send them to me on the Facebook, or the LinkedIn, or the uh, or the Twitter. Whatever you want to do, get in touch. Don't be a stranger. Don't ask a widow. I don't want no bloody shitting stalkers. Right. Until next time, drink responsibly and I'll, I'll see you next time. Speak to you next time. Whatever you know. Yeah. Peregrine out.